it feels like Thanksgiving the day after, okay? It's even more good. Bang it, seasoned chicken marinated overnight. Yep, you see it, you see it. I'm back, car quicks. And I know you're like, hey, we've seen this car before. Yeah, that's a GR Corolla. And I'm here to talk about my update. See, the last time I was here, I did one at 2,000 miles, right? And at that point in time, in that juncture, I was like, this thing's amazing, I love it, so on and so forth. But we got to come back and talk about what it's been like at 9,000 miles. It's over 9,000! So, if any of you are on the fence, if you're asking yourself, who out there actually has driven this car more than 1,000 miles or 2,000 miles or actually is the owner that's been in and out of it for a substantial amount of time, well, this is it. I'm here to show it to you. Now, I just felt a couple of raindrops on me, so hopefully it holds back a little bit so we can complete this video. So, what's it been like? I'm at 9,000 miles, and during this time, it has been bliss, okay? It has been wonderful. I have nothing to complain about. I can't tell you the amount of questions I've gotten about whether it was worth the price, should you have gotten something else? Would you have gotten something else? Do you regret buying it? How does it compare to a Civic Type R? Why didn't you buy the Elantra N? What about the WRX? How was the MSRP? What about the markup? What about the ADMs? Just a lot of questions. So I'm here to answer those. Because after 9,000 miles, I pretty much have a very acute understanding of how this car is. And I understand how it performs. So I'm gonna get this out the way it's been wonderful okay this is one of the best cars i've ever owned right so what's it been like how's it been what's been the upkeep how was the comfort been so i'm 6'2 sorry i sold myself short 6'3 okay 220 pounds so i'm a bigger person i'm not some smaller person where comfort can be a little bit relative or they can find comfort in things that are maybe uncomfortable for somebody my size right so this is what it looks like from my seat position don't worry about the dirty floor mat it's dusty just all wear the floor mat and clean it off but this is my seat position that i've been at for the you know all this mileage and then in the back here is what it looks like now obviously We've already been through this as far as the storage space and the space on the GR Corolla. No, it's not. This is a luxury. Like, you're not about to throw nine kids back there, but can you fit people back there? I've already been through it on my first video. You can. I've sat beside behind myself. I put three of my kids back here. I put brother-in-laws and family and friends, so it works. But if your main goal is to have a family car and have this service that, just depends on how big your family is. If you only have one kid, your wife is smaller, or it's just you and your child, I mean, you're good. You're good to go. But this is what it looks like, right? <clears throat> this is what the comfort's been like for 9,000 miles, and no complaints. As far as the ride quality, so we get a lot, I get a lot of questions about, hey, I heard the ride is stiff, is it bad, does it not feel that great? The ride is stiff because it's a performance car. So no, you're not gonna have something that feels like a Mercedes Benz or a BMW, something that's gonna isolate you away from how the car feels on the road. And if you're driving on terrible roads, then I don't know what to tell you. Get on some better roads, because if you're on pothole ridden roads, it's gonna feel garbage, okay? And that's for any car. But as far as how this one feels, I daily drive it. So I've been in it on bad roads, on highways, on byways, on back roads. I've been in the car and it feels great. 
and I'm not a person that's like super young where I'm just like, I can ride around as cut springs and slam coils and be like, it's all good, it's fine. No, I want a car that is comfortable because I'm in it every single day. So that does matter. So I am not naive to the fact that some people might look at this car and say, I want it to feel more comfortable when I'm driving. It's a performance car. So if you want to be isolated from any indolations in the road, any potholes, you might want to pick a different car. But if you understand what this car is meant to do and, can, and drive it on the road, it drives fine, perfectly fine. I like feeling the road. Yes, you feel bumps when you're on a bad road, but you feel connection when you're on a smooth road. When you're driving on the back roads and you're driving spirited, you feel the connection. That's what we want. That's what we want in this category. We want connection. So for 9,000 miles, the car is held up incredibly well, right? You might see some rain on the car because I said it's kind of sprinkling out here. But this is the condition 9,000 miles in. Now, Toyota isn't known for like the world's greatest paint or the thickest paint. And I have PPF only on the front bumper and the headlights. I don't have anything on the hood. I don't have anything on the roof. And this is the condition we have. This is 9,000 miles of driving. And I don't mean just driving in little places, little country roads, not that far. I'm putting serious distance between me and my house where I work and I'm driving on the highways. I'm driving on major interstates, 85 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour. So I'm really putting in the work. And so this is what you have. So the front end is PPF, so you're not really going to see anything there. But one of the issues that some people worry about is all this here. Rocker panels, the fenders in the rear because they stick out so much. So if you look in the front, this right here is you would be worried that this is going to catch a bunch of rocks but as you can see here that is my condition this is not ppf that's me washing it you might see little black specks on it that's me just driving on the road right now but there are no major rock chips there might be a few i'm not going to say there aren't a few little spots here and there if i really fine tooth comb the side of the car but that's just the name of the game right if I was to PPF the entire car, I wouldn't have to worry about that. And they probably ask yourself, well, why didn't you do that? Everybody wants to PPF their car. I kind of had to weigh cost, what I wanted to spend, how I feel about the car. And I just wanted to put it in areas that mattered the most to me. Now, later on, I might put it on the rear and add it there and the front fenders and stuff like that. But I put it on the high impact areas first, front bumper, headlights, side view mirrors, right? And really this little video as well is like a testament to understanding that if you take care of your car, it'll take care of you, right? So another high impact point that some owners might worry about is up here. So up here on this roof line, you, get, you can get a lot of, you know, rocks hitting here, as you can see, I've been driving for 9,000 miles and you would notice the condition here, even on this rear, rear panels, rear rocker panels where the GR4 is and the side skirts. It all looks very good, very clean. And I clean this car pretty much multiple times a week. If there's any chips, they're very small. It's not like it's just been blasted, sandblasted. So you don't have to worry about the quality. If you don't have the means to just grab this car and PPF it, because a lot of times when you get these new cars, you see a lot of owners say like, yo, just bought it, trailed it to the PPF spot, had them, I spent another $3,000 spraying, like it's a lot. Cause the cars aren't the cheapest thing in the world. So sometimes people feel like they're obligated. Oh, well, I have to do it. Or I'm gonna mess the car, but you will be fine. You take care of it, clean it off, ceramic coat it where you can, PPF it where you can, and enjoy the car. Don't get so caught up in, you know, sending your car off to get another $4,000 of work before you even put it on the road. Drive these cars. Now, <clears throat> in the back, you'll notice the exhaust tips have a bunch of carbon buildup, and I haven't been like on top of cleaning out the carbon buildup on it. I'll do it later, but that's what you pretty much see at my mileage, right? Rear bumper, is intact, there's nothing torn off of it. I've been under the car, 
The nice thing about this car is that it has, the bottom of it is completely flat. So you don't get a lot of things kicking up or hitting the bottom of it, and it's extremely clean, like very good quality, right? Brake dust, and I gotta talk about this again. The brake dust is still a situation, right? Because the pads on there are very soft. They grab very well, they stop very well, but they throw out a wild amount of dust. So your upkeep is very high, but as you can see, that's what the road has looked like at 9,000 miles. I, don't, I haven't done any measurements on the millimeters on the pads, but this is condition of my rotors after 9,000 miles, and that includes some very spirited driving in the back roads. I haven't done any track days, but I've, you know, I've maintained the driving of this car as it was designed. I'm not babying it. I'm not trying to like not drive it as it should be. So if you're wondering like, well, how does that hold up? What's the, how is that gonna do? Well, let's talk about, let's talk about the maintenance. I'm, I'm looking at my notes real quick because I got notes down here. Modification, man, okay. So let's talk about maintenance. So for 9,000 miles, the only thing that I've done is an oil change and tire rotation. That's it. I haven't done anything special. I haven't had to change the pads. If you look at the tires, these tires are the ones I've been on this entire time. More than enough tread and life left. Nothing is peeling off. They're not beat up. They're not wearing unevenly. The alignment is rock solid. I haven't had to get anything realigned. I haven't had to deal with rattles and bangs and anything like that because the quality and the way the car is this many miles is a question that many have and they want answered. So let me go show you the driver's seat, right? Because I've been sitting in it all this time. You're like, what's the condition of it? Like, how's the interior holding up? I heard it's all plastic. Well, here's the driver's seat at 9,000 miles of me sitting in it. See a little crease right here? That's from me sitting inside of it. So you see somebody's been sitting in it, but this is a condition. This is a condition of the interior at 9,000 miles, right? Panels, center console, the door card's wet because it was sprinkling a little bit of rain. But I might have a little, there might be a little scuff mark down here, one or two, a little kick panel down there. This is a condition, solid, feels good. Nothing is, nothing's breaking, nothing's brittle. Because the question that kids ask all the time is, people say, well, interior's cheap, the interior's cheap, the interior's cheap. And I think we're confusing cheap for a certain different materials, right? Like, so if you wanna jump inside this car and feel leather and Alcantara everywhere, you're not going to. If you have like the circuit edition one, you will have some more Alcantara in the seats and a Marisa one, but you're not having cheap. Like cheap makes people think it's not quality. If I buy a cheap pair of sneakers, they're not quality. But because I buy Converse, doesn't mean that a pair of leather Jordans are more higher quality. Converse are made out of canvas. They're still a high quality shoe. So when people are comparing these cars and saying something feels cheap, don't get confused into thinking that the cheapness means that the car is built badly. They may be used to a certain leather, soft materials that come on higher end cars or maybe in other cars in this category that got given those components. Toyota is a little easier or more simple when it comes to how they decide to do the interiors of their cars. So me personally, I haven't had any issues. I feel like it's just as high quality as any of them. No, it doesn't look as exciting as the red, you know, as far as the Civic Type R. Don't, you know, the seats don't look crazy, but the quality is what we're talking about. And does it lack any? No, it doesn't lack any. Yes, the surfaces, the touch are plastic. Yes, plastic can be hard. If you find yourself wanting to rest your elbow up here, then yes, it's not gonna be as soft as maybe another car that has like softer vinyl or leather up there or cloth. It's not gonna be as soft as that. But the quality of it, which is to talk about how it withstands, is not lacking. See, I've been in this 9,000 miles. So I'm gonna tell you, if this was falling apart, I'd know about it. Like, I'd see it right now. So this is what we got in the rear seat. 
Not that I've had, I've actually had a few people back here. My son, he has a booster seat that sits back there all the time. Cup holders right here. They're still in good condition. So people use this car. This isn't something that gets babied and nobody touches it and it never gets used. It gets used. So interior wise, it's held up very nice. Have no complaints. It's been very comfortable and I've enjoyed my time. Now, have I changed anything? There have been a few modifications, nothing crazy here. We're not, we're not going crazy just yet. Stuff ain't out yet. But if you remember from my first review, the lack of an armrest was a glaring issue. And so a gentleman, GR Nola, Granola, shout out to him. Remember I said, I mentioned it before. Well, it came out. I got it in red stitching because I'm going to later get bucket seats that have red stitching on them. And then I also changed out my shift knob to a company called Likewise based out of Australia. Heavier shift knob. And I did a reverse lockout that just looks cool. It doesn't add any performance to it. It just looks cool. But I did add performance, right? So we're going to talk about that. When it comes to the transmission of the car, for 9,000 miles, it has been rock solid. I haven't had any grinds. I haven't had any you know, fail safes or any warnings. Hold on. Everything's been perfectly fine. So this is what the engine looks like at 9,000 miles. I purposely did not clean anything. It's just dusty, really. Remember I told you under the car, there is a tray that's completely flat. So you don't get a lot of kick up from dirt and dust on the engine. It's very clean as far as how it looks now. I got to clean it off after this, but underneath the intake right here, I put some bushings, some aluminum bushings on the shifter. I put some inside of the shifter base inside the car. I have a video on my channel already that talks about me trying to make the car shift as good as a Civic Type R, which I have achieved because it feels wonderful. So that's the only modification I did. That's more of the drivetrain. I have some more coming as far as like a pitch stop mount, but nothing, there hasn't been any major things yet. The car is still very new. One of the big things that I'm starting to see them talk about is that they have tuning coming out. They have stage one things coming out because one of the things that I've been asked is how has the power been 9,000 miles later? Here's what I'm going to tell you. It feels like Thanksgiving the day after. Okay. It's even more good. Bang it. Seasoned chicken marinated overnight. It hasn't lost a step. It feels great. And so the companies like VF Tuning or EC, ECU Tech, I've seen a few articles, a few people making posts. They got some stage one that's cleaning up the power band because I'm not looking for more power right now. I'm looking for more noise, honestly. I want an exhaust. I want an intake. Might get a little blow off valve, little psh psh sounds, you know, something like that. But power wise, 9,000 miles later, I haven't felt anything lacking. Matter of fact, it gets even better. Like I said, it's Thanksgiving dinner the day after. Now, you know Thanksgiving's better the day after. Don't act like it's not. So imagine this every single day being how you feel when you eat Thanksgiving the next day. Same thing here, right? So power, performance, nothing's lacking. The car isn't creaking. The brakes aren't starting to fade. There's no... There's nothing like that. So the modification part of the car that I'm more interested in is, it's kind of more the balance. So I want the three tip exhaust that, that I want to keep on the car. Unfortunately, a lot of the options that are coming out for the car, as far as manufacturers go, are very pricey. And some of it deals with the valve system that's on the car. Some of it deals with the fact that materials are more money across the board in the world of manufacturing. Some of it deals with building three tip exhausts on a car. So there are other options that if you want single center, there's one for like $800 from MBRP. There's other companies coming out like Six Element who made the center console part. They have a dual in the center and a single coming out. So there are options for those that can deal without the three tip exhaust. Us people that want the uniqueness of three, we're gonna have to pay, okay? We're gonna have to pay the money. And that's just what, that's what it's just what's gonna be. I understand that. Like at first I was hoping for better, but then I'm like, listen, 
we want what we want you got to pay what you got to pay so modification wise i've kept it relatively simple as far as the drivetrain as far as everything runs and works but it has been a wonderful experience it hasn't needed anything extra it hasn't been eating oil i haven't had to you know race to go top off fluids all the time it has been what you expect because the main thing about this car too is that it's built by toyota in japan and they care about what they're building so reliability and performance is something that this is why we gravitate towards this. This is why some of us are like, yo, we're only dealing with Honda, we're only dealing with Toyota when it comes to some of these performance sport compact cars because we know, we know what can happen on the other end of it. Shout out to the Volkswagen people. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. Anyways, here's the trunk. I got my backpacks there. It's been used. I had the all weather mat the last time I was here, but this is a condition of me throwing mulch back there, pieces of wood, Costco runs. I'm using this car for real. It doesn't sit in the garage. It's not babied. I'm not waxing it and just staring at it and then making a post. I'm in the streets, okay? So this is a condition of it. Now, to my notes, I'm reading them real quick. What do we got next? Let's see. Modification, performance, various and repair cars, armors. Got it. So. One of the things that was talked about or that people wanted to get an update on is cargo space, right? I just showed you the cargo trunk and I shut it for no reason. I don't know what I was thinking. But 9,000 miles, not once have I gone to do something. I've picked up plants from Lowe's and put them in this thing. Giant palm tree plants. My wife's a plant lady. So I picked up plants. I put them in the back. I put wood. I've done everything. It can haul stuff. If anybody's saying it's too small, it can't haul some, I mean, like, I don't listen, everybody has different lifestyles. Some of us, every other day, you're hauling bags of sand and golf clubs. I mean, if that's how you get down, then it may not perform how you want. But for everybody else who just goes to the store, gets groceries, occasionally picks up some clothes, might go to, I don't know, Home Depot. I've picked up a shelf in a table from Ikea in this thing, okay? Seats down front seat up the whole you know the ikea lack the l-a-c-k that whole shelf i put that whole thing in there assembled so if anybody's telling you it can't fit they're liars okay they don't know how to pack okay they need to play tetris more and they'll learn how to now here's a comparison thing many times i'm gonna throw y'all up here real quick because i'm sick of walking around so one of the things that comes up is in comparison to you know this category civic type r launcher and wrx so on and so forth everybody wants to compare their cars they want to say which one is better which one should i've gotten i heard x y and z this one was better i heard the civic beat the gr corolla marizo edition by two seconds on the silverstone track listen if Honda made the Civic Type R to be a track weapon out the door, right? The Elantra N is built by some of the most talented engineers that came from places like the M Division over to Hyundai to make that car. The WRX has been a rally bred car since the inception of when it came out, so you already know its pedigree. So they're all a good cars. You just have to go by your preference. Now, if you're de determining what to buy based on what the aftermarket does, I'm going to stop you there and say that's a dumb idea. Because the only difference between a fast car and a slow car is how much money you got. And if you have unlimited funds and you can get whatever you want under the sun and make it however fast you want to make it, right? So some people look at the aftermarket and they're like, well, I heard there isn't that much or the new VBWRX is making crazy numbers with E85 and a turbo and a downpipe, which is true. They are. But you, have to, you like what you like. If you don't like the new WRX, I just didn't like it. I was waiting for one. I had my name on a list. I was excited about it. I drove one. They drive better than they look, but I just couldn't, like there was nothing there that was calling me to it. And even looking at the ones online that are modified, that look good, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get with it. So for some people, that's gonna be the case. The people that like the Civic Type R like the Civic Type R. They might look at this and be like, I don't like the GR Corolla. 
But this whole idea of which one is better is what's causing people to just really not understand that you're looking at special cars on every one of these categories. I prefer the GR Corolla having been in a Civic Type R, having had my name on a list, having put my name off the list, having driven one. I still was like, it just isn't talking to me. And that's all this is. Everybody's car is going to speak to them differently. The all-wheel drive in this, the way it claws out of corners, the way it feels on the back rows, this to me reminded me of the old STI hatchback I had, the old Evo 8s and 9s, like this, that air of like kind of raw, a little unrefined. You know, the Civic Type R is refined. Feels great. It's an awesome car. If I had the means to have both, I'd have both. But if you told me which one do you want, the reason why I picked this is because the intangible things speak to me more, right? Interior wise, like I said, the quality is there. It may not have the pizzazz of red bucket seats and those seats are dope. It may not have the red carpet to make you look at it and be like, oh, I'm in a really, really special place because it does make you feel like that because you see the color. I'm not a big red interior person. So like to me, that's, that's a, that detracts from me. I don't really care, but somebody else will care. So the point of this whole thing is decide what you actually care about, not whatever people's opinions are, not for you to give. You want to get cool points. I mean, fine, cool. Try to get cool points. I probably got stopped in this car more times than I ever have in any other car as an owner. So my ownership has been, it's been fun. It's been, you know, it's been an enjoyable experience. I'm kind of jumping to that subject matter because I wrote it down in my notes. As an owner, I've enjoyed the community. It's fun to have a new platform and see people that are excited about it, making videos about it, wanting to modify it, wanting to get more, you know, performance out of it, reading things about it. So that is one thing about being an owner of a platform so new is that you kind of get all that that hype and that buzz and we and people like that some people try to knock like, oh, wait for the hype to die down hype excitement whatever you want to call it that's part of the enjoyment of having the car you like to be excited about it you want other people excited about it you want folks to look at it too and say man i really like that car i think it's really cool so the people that have come up to me since i've owned it have all spoken to that they like the car they've seen it they ask me questions about it, and I love talking to people about it, explaining it to them how it's been, things that I've done, things that I've wished I did. You know, I just keep it very open for them and talk because the point of these cars is for people to be able to get around them and enjoy them. I don't need to like hide it from anybody. That's why I drive it all the time. Now, back, okay, good subject point here. I kind of want to sit down and do this, but I don't have, I kind of have the tripod set up, but it's kind of set up. I'm gonna have to do a whole bunch I'm gonna do right now. So we'll sit down and talk. So one of the things that I get asked sometimes is, would you have changed your mind for a circuit edition or a Marizo edition, right? Why didn't I buy a circuit edition? Why didn't you get a Marizo edition? Well, Marizo edition is easy. I'm not paying extra to lose back seats and no power steering in the rear, no rear wiper. Yes, it has higher torque. It's tuned a little bit better. The gearing's different. I, it doesn't move me. It's not worth the price. The real battle was between a circuit edition and a core edition with all the options. So I come from the era, I come from the world of STI, WRX, right? S2000, stuff like that. Those cars had noticeable differences above their lesser counterpart. For instance, the regular WRX hatchback is nothing like the STI one. STI one had a different engine, drivetrain, drive modes, brake system, power. It was a complete upgrade from the WRX, right? The GR Corolla is the first time we're really, we're only talking about trim level and aesthetic. The circuit edition does not gain any power or performance unless your core model doesn't have the performance pack. So the performance pack includes the front and rear differentials and the brake off is painted red to show people that you have the performance pack, right? But the main benefit of the performance pack are those diffs. So if you have that, you have everything. You don't, the circuit edition adds all the other packages. I have the tech package, which included those JBL speakers, 
and wireless charging, which is somewhere, somewhere down there. And that was pretty much it, right? That was the tech pack. The circuit edition includes better material on the seats right here. So it has like Alcantara in the center and then Fox leather on the outside and like red stitching in a variety of places like the center console has red stitching around this bezel on the door cards places on the seat. So it looks aesthetically better is the, what I argue is the quality better. This is cloth, but cloth doesn't lose quality. Like I said, the material that it is doesn't mean that it's less quality. It might it looks better to the eyes and probably feels better to the touch but quality is going to be the same across the board as far as how the cars go so when i was looking at the models i wasn't moved by the forged carbon roof i i didn't really like how it looked and i was trying to convince myself that i liked it then i didn't really care about the upkeep for the forged carbon roof skin then i realized i was going to eventually want to change out these seats to like some brids or recaros so I was like, why am I paying extra for seats that look better? The back seats being better would have been nice. I mean, it's cool to see that. But I understood that my whole goal and the things that I want to spend my money on did not align with the circuit edition. So I was not going to pay the extra for the circuit edition. So that's why I chose the core one with these packages. Also, funny enough, I don't like heated seats and I don't use them. So to have extra buttons, because you have heated seats, you'd have two buttons right here and here. And I knew if I was gonna change my seats, I would have had extra buttons there that are not being used and it would have annoyed me. So I was like, don't do this to yourself. You wanna add stuff to it. I wasn't really sold by the Circuit Edition wing. It was smaller than I wanted. I have one being made now, it's a carbon blade. It looks ah, fire. So I already knew that I was going a different route. So it didn't make any sense to pay this extra for things that I'm going to remove. Now, the one thing that I do want and I wasn't always this way. See, I was going to get some type of other hood. Because right now, if you notice on the regular core one, we don't have like the bulge hood with the vents on it. I was going to wait for the market to produce carbon fiber ones or things like that. But then I got to thinking the other day and I was like, well, I don't really care for carbon fiber hoods by themselves. I would probably paint it. And I'm going to paint it. Why am I paying extra for carbon fiber? It's not like I'm trying to save weight. I know when you open the hood at a show, they see the carbon fiber, they can get excited. Maybe if I painted it with a certain design that showed the carbon fiber or something like that, it could be better. Or maybe if somebody makes a different design with certain vents or something that I do like, maybe I'll get one. But what I'm getting to is that I may actually go get a circuit edition hood right there and have that be one of the modifications I do on the car to give it the, the front end look that I like. So that might be one thing I add to it. But that's the reason why I got the core edition. So if you're thinking about the GR Corolla, you gotta ask yourself those questions. You gotta ask yourself, do I care about those things? Do they mean something to me? Do I want to add them? Do I wanna use them? Because if you don't, save your money. Because the markup situation, unfortunately, is making all these cars come into question. You'll get people saying the GR Corolla is great, but it's not worth the markup. It's only a twenty-eight to thirty-two thousand dollar car, and I think people are missing the point of inflation. They're missing the point of as time goes on, prices have increased. So whatever was thirty-two thousand back in the day for an Evo eight or nine, then prices are out the window. I know car prices are ridiculous right now, but you don't don't compare the car's performance to what it does under some ideology of what was in the past because the past is the past we're in the present now that's what the cars are costing this is about 37 to 38 thousand dollars if you want the circuit edition it's 43 thousand dollars if you want a civic type r it's 44 if you want an integra type s it's 52 thousand like that's just what it is right now it's unfortunate like it would be great to go back in the days when evil eights or 30 grand but when those came out relative to the time people said the same thing Maybe not everybody, but some people did because they're probably like, who's paying that much for a Mitsubishi? You know, they didn't understand what it was. So that's that's something to keep in mind when you're t thinking about these cars or the GR Corolla and what model and what version to get. Now, as far as it's been, that's the modifications I would do. This is how it's been. The condition has been great. I've enjoyed my time. I'm going to look at my notes real quick because 
I noticed something else. That pretty much wraps this up almost. Um, I don't regret anything that I've ever bought with this car. I would do it 50 times over. I don't care if there was a Civic Type R in front of me and they handed me both the keys and said, you could take any one you want for free. I'm taking the GR Corolla. And I would do it every time. I haven't done any track days. I plan to do that. I haven't done the HPD days. However, I will say, currently with Toyota fighting the battles of blown engines on GR86s and them trying to deny claims, I'm a little leery of going to some of these track days with Toyota. You know, I don't know how they're gonna react if something goes left with the car. But as far as how it is performed, I've had, oh, I've also added the rear taillights. I've added an overlay to make them all red. And you can see that all on my channel. Go to my channel, all them videos of when I did that and the shifter bushings are on there. But other than that, it's been one of the most enjoyable experiences. As far as meeting people that own the car, having driven it, I'm gonna shut the hood real quick. Having driven it, owned it, it's been, an enjoyable enjoyable time i would buy this car over and over again and would recommend anybody who's thinking about one to do the same thing now i personally hope i don't got a thumbnail i'm trying to you know i'm making thumbnails okay forgive me hope i need some more okay we got it all right so that's it after nine thousand miles like i've said the condition is great. I mean, this is what it looks like. 9,000 mile front end. Now, I will say something. Down here at the bottom, you will see bugs and stuff that get caught up in there. I haven't really figured out anything to clean that up. The intercooler you see, I could see a few little fins of the intercooler that are like dented, obviously from stuff flying into it, rocks, bugs, nothing major. Nothing to have me like, oh man, I gotta hurry up and get that cleared up. I mean, if I'm gonna change anything with that, I'm just gonna wait till I get a bigger front mount if I deem it necessary to do that. But it's been fine. I am waiting to get some sequential turn signals there. A gentleman on uh, Instagram shared with me a link for those. I'm gonna change that out. But again, it's been great. I would do this again. I would buy it again. I would encourage anybody that's looking for a hot hatch in this category, in this idea to do this, to get one, or at least go drive it. Decide what it is that you actually want to do and you want to get and go for it. Because in the time that I've had it, the time I've driven back and forth to work, I've drawn on road trips, I've been all around. The car has held up phenomenally. I don't have check engine lights. There's no oil leaks. There's no oil top off. It's not burning oil. My maintenance has been barely anything. I've done an oil change and tire rotation and everything else has been fine. That is why we buy new Toyotas. <laughs> so during this time, Everything has been great. As far as the technology in the car, nothing has failed. I haven't got any weird issues or screens going blank or stuff like that. It's been great. So this is my little update. 9,000 miles in, I wouldn't ask for another car. I wouldn't ask for another one. If you're thinking about buying one, go buy it. It's fire. I don't care what anybody says. So I love it. So there you have it. 9,000 mile update on the GR Corolla. That is the condition of it. If you want me to do more or do more of a close up, if you want me to really get into the minute details of anything that you might have a question about, but I pretty much covered it all. If you're looking at this car and wondering, dang, I gotta wrap this whole thing in plastic or it's gonna fall apart, I'm proof that it won't. I drive this thing everywhere and it's holding up great. So until next time, as always, as I always say, do as you wish. Do as you may. It's Car Quicks. I'll see you on the next episode. I got a podcast, another one coming up, another short, all that stuff. Tap in, like, subscribe, do all those things. All right? I'll check in later. Peace. Hey.